Hello everyone, I am the Great Zarin. Today is June 19th, 2016, Father's Day. So, my day today is going to be full of going to my parents' house to go see my dad to celebrate that he's kind of important for me being here. <laughs> Not just literally, but in many other ways too. He got me into video games, he taught me to focus on school, he's someone that did give me my love and passion of learning about all things, other cultures, history, science, math, and all of that. He's the one that, when I said 16, I wanted to make video games, he said, well, programs make money. Okay. So I got a degree in computer science, which has got me the job that I have now, which pays me very nicely and lets me live very, very comfortably to not only be able to eat and have clothes and shelter and all that, but to have a cat that I can come home to and have it be the most excited little thing just because I come home. <laughs> I can buy video games that I want. I can also give a lot to charity. I owe them a lot. He was a great dad, and he still is. And one day I'll give him grandchildren so he can be a wonderful grandfather as well. <laughs> and I'll probably have to tell the kids, no, no, grandpa's not always right. No, no, shouldn't do that. Just because grandpa did doesn't mean that's a good thing to do. <laughs> Although I find it funny. You, you probably shouldn't for another couple of years. He was fantastic. He was, because he worked at a job that he hated. He absolutely hated the job that he had for nearly 18 years. It was a job that moved my mom, my dad, and myself to North Carolina when I was six years old. It's been 20 years now, actually. Hadn't thought about that. I thought about it earlier in the year, but... I just now realized that, yeah, it was about this time in 1996 that we moved down here. Which, as my friend told me, like, you pretty much are a southerner. You've lived here for 20 years now, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, my dad was willing to get a job in another state. You know, he hated the job. At a certain point, he was working seven days a week, eight hours a day, to be sure that my mom, my brother, and myself had food to keep the house that we had, and we could live comfortably. He hated the job. Killed his soul to do that. And looking back, I almost wish he had worked less or had just taken some time to get another job. Even if it meant him not making quite as much money, I think that it would have been great because he would have been happier at home. He wouldn't have been so angry all the time. So, my dad fishes electronics. Not exactly what he wanted to get into, but NCR, National Cash Register, yes, they made the cash register. Do I uh, remember the story that they came to him and said, hey, you can work for us, we'll pay for your schooling. Okay. So he did it. And according to him, he liked that job, but... I was like five, six years old when he lost the job, so. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he did that job. And he never physically, literally brought work home. But he brought work home. 
and it would have been preferable for him to have gotten another job somehow. I don't even really know the details of it, but he would have been happier. I know that in the past year or so, maybe, maybe a little bit longer, I'd say at least roughly a year, he's been a lot happier. And he's still doing about the same thing, but he's allowed to learn. He's not around quite as many idiots, it sounds like. He's happier. And that's all I'd really want. I wouldn't want him to make a million dollars a year and be able to support me for life or anything. Just want him to be able to be at home and relax and be happy. I've got so many things I'd like to do with him. I know that I want to take him on a day trip or a small weekend trip somewhere at some point. But there's one thing I know I want to do for him. My dad always told me he wanted to go see the Rocky Mountains, so at some point I want to do that. I want to just, that you know, made for his 60th birthday, maybe if I strike it rich for some reason soon, just say, you know what, you are going on a week-long trip to the Rocky Mountains with me, no questions asked, let's go. <laughs> and if... You know, be a concern of, well, you know, I get paid hourly. And, like, I will give you the money for that. I don't care. I just want you to go on a nice trip. But that'd be when I'm very well off. I'm well off now. But better. Because another thing he gave me was just be really, really careful with money. And I am, just by default. I naturally don't like spending a whole big bunch of money, unless I absolutely have to. And if so, I like to do it in short bursts. He gave me, a, it can be declared either a great caution or a great paranoia about money, whichever you want to call it. And caution and paranoia is probably on a thin line anyway, so, but I'm here, I'm able to help somebody else with a decent amount of help, I can give them quite a bit of money, which for them is, it's starting to not be a small amount, but for me I'm like, eh, right, can't hear, <laughs> you know. Over the past few years, especially as my dad had lost his job and I saw the aftermath of that and as I went through school destroying me and me pretty much having to start from scratch, I really found how similar him and me were. And I think I was always aware of it, but I think whatever bad things I saw, I really didn't want to do. I think... I don't know if I was blind to it, I don't know if I just took it to heart so much to, by his directive, improve on what he'd done, be better than him, do better than him, or what it was, but I just, I don't think I fully acknowledged how similar him and me were in many things. If we feel like we gotta devote all of our time and energy to something, for him it was his job, for me it was school, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it and you're not gonna be able to stop us. And it's going to take everything falling down around our ears before we go, okay, I need to stop now. Imagine that I won't even do it. We'll still try to push forward. But I think after my dad had that job for nearly 18 years, after I'd been in school for about 18 years, and school beat me down the last two or three of that, those, those years, we both needed to stop. 
we both needed a few months at least where we just said, okay, we do nothing else except rest and recover our souls. And we got it at about the same time. It was so odd that for a couple of years we were having very parallel things happen for a short while at least. Because I had finished with school and didn't know what I was going to do next. I actually I knew what I was going to do next, I just couldn't do it. And then my dad had lost his job and we both had, you know, jobs that didn't last very long at about the same time. I had a job for about two months that had started just before he lost his job. And then he had started his next little position. And then I'd lost my job. Then he continued his position for a few more months. And it was actually maybe a month or so after I'd started my current job that at the time my dad was driving me home because um, he worked in Greensboro. I worked in Greensboro. And he picked me up after work. Because I think it was during the school year. So my mom still needed the car to pick up and drop off my brother and my dad while driving home one evening just said in a very excited voice you know that you know he had been fired from that job and as bad as the job he had for 18 years was this job was even worse and I won't go into details but some serious idiots and some seriously questionable things. He was so happy to lose that job. And that started him not having a job for a while. And as much as he needed to you know, have a job and all that, his caution with money and the fact that my parents, myself, my brother don't really live extravagantly helped a lot. And again, so what does he need to have a job? You know, because he had you know, like a son and a wife to take care of, you know. And, you know, I was still living there at the time, so he had to take care of me too. So he dealt both of his sons, definitely. He needed that time off to rest, to regain who he was. To not keep running himself into the ground. And because of that, and because of the job that he has, he's allowed to be my dad. He's allowed to be my hero, again. He's allowed to be awesome as can be. Just think about all the funny things he does. So he just, for example, my dad will every once in a while buy a lottery ticket. Like, well, you know, I get this much extra taxes, you know. He just, he's got it down and all that, you know. I'm pretty sure he's got, you know, like a 20-step plan for how we'd spend all the, you know, he'd, you know, pay off this and do that and give this people so much money and people that much money, you know. <laughs> Always seems like he's got some idea of what he wants to do. Like he keeps saying, "I want to pay, paint some gold. I want something painted gold." You know, so at some point I'm gonna give him something that's painted gold. I don't know what it is, but something can get painted gold at some point. It's a that's about the guarantees I can give. Something can get painted gold. He's not perfect. He let a job wreck his soul. But I don't let school wreck my soul, so... I thought I got some more to improve on, but hey. Show us try to improve each and every day. Every generation should be better than the last, so... <laughs> what are you gonna do about it? I never want him to be... like he was. Because there's one time where... He had made me frustrated, and he pretty much just said that, you know, he'd given up trying to be nice. He gave up trying to improve himself, pretty much, and that broke my heart, because it was my hero giving up.
and look back now, maybe it was the first of a couple of different things that went wrong that eventually led to having a year or so of my life be just completely in ruins. But whether he's going to actively be trying to improve himself all the time or not, be able to be himself again. And he's not perfect. No father is perfect. No dad's perfect. I was like, oh, I found the perfect dad. I'm like, well, I'll show you a perfect liar. Because no dad's perfect. Because they always should have been less aggravated about this, or they should have liked you to do that, or they could have been here, or they could have done this, or done, gone over there and done that. Could have you know helped you on this or done something about that. Or they could have not done this or not done that. You know, let you do this or do that. But the best ones aren't perfect. But the best ones do everything in their power to be the best. The best ones are the ones that either it's hard to find the flaws or even if the flaw is obvious, it's hard to keep harping on about. You're like, well, you know, they had a temper, but, you know, they did this and this and this and this and this, and, you know, I never, you know, had to starve or anything, which is true. There was never a time that I worried that, oh, well, I won't have dinner tonight. There was never a time I went, oh, well, you know, I can't wear the shoes for another year to school. It was never a time of, oh, well, I wonder if I'm going to go home when I come home. I always had my basic needs, and I was able to have video games. We were able to, for the longest time, either go to Ohio or go on a vacation, or sometimes even both. There were two, maybe three years where we went to Ohio, and then me and my dad went to Myrtle Beach. And then eventually it was uh, my dad, my brother, and me. The four of us went to Myrtle Beach, or to Gatlinburg. It was great. My dad did a lot for me. It's more than I could ever repay him for. That's the truth. I just hope that not only can I keep fulfilling the great legacy of our family, that I can just keep finding things to make him happy, that I can keep helping him with whatever I can, that I can finally fix things around the house that long needed fixing, but they either didn't have the time or the money to do it. I know he's got a short list of things that need to be fixed very quickly. I'm hoping to be able to make him a grandfather in a couple of years. Because as awesome as he was with me, I'd love to see what he can do with grandchildren. Because you get to spoil grandchildren. You don't got to raise them, <laughs> necessarily. So. On this Father's Day. I'd say that I love you, Dad. I owe you for a lot. Much more than I could ever repay you for. I could probably go on for hours about every little thing that you did, about every funny little anecdote, about every indirect impact you had. Just because of video games that I have a reason to have great friendships. It's given me an avenue to be creative now with the YouTube channel that I'm doing now and the Twitch streaming that I do. It gave the stepping stone gateway to programming, which 
is by itself a great field and has given me a job that I'm really important at. You've done a lot right. And you can do everything you can do everything perfectly. It doesn't matter. You did everything in your power. If you do your very best, what more can you ask for? Impossible. You've done a lot. As I said, I can't repay you for it, Dad. Just try to take care of yourself. I'm more than willing to help with that as well, because I owe you. I owe you an infinite amount. So happy Father's Day. And I love you, Dad. And I'll see you the rest of you later.